Recording clean audio can be one of the most frustrating aspects of filming a video. And I know our lav mic system has never worked for us. But I think finally we found a system that we're actually happy with. Let me start off this video by saying that if you're looking for something cheap, I highly recommend the Rode Link system. For just 400 bucks, you can get a fairly reliable system with a great sounding microphone. And we believe that Rode makes the absolute best lav mic accessories. When we're filming outside and we know it's not going to be very windy, we love using the WS-LAV pop filter. And because it has this really nice rubberized gasket on the bottom, it fits snugly onto the microphone itself and it will not fall off. Unlike Sennheiser's accessories, which literally fall off every time we use them. Now, if we know it's going to be windy, we love using the Mini Fur Dash Lav. We use this thing 100% of the time when we're filming outside on our full length photography tutorials. When we filmed Photographing the World with Lyle Licardi, we used it 100% of the time outside as well, and it was kind of difficult for you guys to see because Elia was usually wearing so many clothes. But we also used it when we were filming the swimwear photography tutorial with Joey Wright, and of course, it's a little bit more obvious with him. It's weird that my chest hair grows like a rabbit's tail, inconveniently right above all of my collars. But hey, it works. Now, if you're looking to film a movie or some sort of commercial where you actually need to hide these labs, we highly suggest the Invisilab system. Now, this comes with double-sided tape that has never worked for us, so what we simply do is duct tape them onto our subject's chest. We actually used this just a couple of days ago when we filmed the Every Photographer Ever spoof video. Oh! Just go fast. Ah! Now, we found that the Roadlink system was not as reliable as our Sennheiser G3 unit. So for years, what we did is we used our Sennheiser G3 transmitter and receiver with the Rode microphone because the lab had such good accessories with it. Sadly, this system wasn't reliable for us either, though, because the Rode microphones have such thin cables that they are constantly breaking. See, this is tape that we've taped on here because we know this is a weak point. It slid up like it always does, and then this broke. Testing, 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 nothing. If you adjust the mic thing. I'm telling you, every single time we had an important video that we had to capture clean audio on, the cables would break and we'd have to buy more. I see, uh, do you have any more of these? No. Just the one. Just one. <laughs> You're lucky. You well, that'll probably work like a week, maybe. We probably spent four or five hundred dollars on extra cables alone, but what's more frustrating than that is having to stop right in the middle of a production to try to rebuild these lav mics and hope that they work. If only we could find a reliable lav mic that was small enough to fit all of the road accessories, while at the same time being robust enough to not break every other time we used it. I'm happy to say that we finally found that microphone. It is the Sennheiser MKE-2. This mic certainly isn't cheap, but it sounds great, it's built like a tank, and it's almost the exact same size as the Rode microphone, meaning that all those accessories that we love are completely compatible. Now let's talk about lav mic clips. Almost all of them suck. They either don't hold the mic far enough away from the clothing so that you can hear the clothing rub up against the microphone as your subject moves around, or they don't have any clip that can contain the extra cable for the mic. I'm happy to say that we have finally found a tie clip that actually works. This thing is great. It's the MZQ22. This clip can hold one or two microphones, and it also has a reverse clip on the back which holds the extra cable. This keeps the entire system much more tidy on your subject's clothing, and it cuts down a ton on cable noise. Now, does this system work 100% of the time? Of course not. Out of range? All right. I think you're just going to have to deal with that at times because of the wireless signal. However, there are a couple of things that we do on important shoots so that we don't have to worry about the audio at all. First of all, if it's a really important shoot, we will always double mic our subject. You can see every time we film with Elia Licardi on location, we really don't want to have to refilm any of what he says. And so Elia is constantly wearing two mics at the same time. This is extra important when you're outside and you might be dealing with extra interference with the radio signal or situations like rain, snow, or heavy wind. 
So what we may do is put one mic in his jacket or under his shirt without any sort of wind protection, and then we'll put a second lav mic on the outside of his jacket with a mini fur. In this situation, even though we might get some sort of sound in one of the lav mics, hopefully we're getting clean audio in the other. And then of course, the most important thing that you can do with audio on location is actually monitor the audio. We always have someone listening to the audio as we're recording the video, and if there's ever a problem, they can say, hey, hold on, we need to refilm that. When Patrick and I are on location filming these tutorials, we always have two mics rolling into separate cameras and both of us are listening to the audio and we'll look at each other. If we're starting to hear wind noise, I'll look over at him and I'll give him a down signal and he'll give me a thumbs up and say everything's fine and we can just keep on rolling and the talent never has to stop. So now that you know the basic hardware that we use to film audio when we're shooting all of these videos, let me take you into Premiere real quick and show you how I can clean up the audio just a little bit very quickly and make it sound a little bit more full and a little bit more rich without really doing much work at all. All right guys, I'm in Premiere here. I've got a clip um, just for audio and let's listen to it as it is right here, straight out of the camera. So this is an audio test just so that you can hear what it sounds like. So the first thing you'll notice, we're hitting around negative uh, 18, negative 12 over here. I wanna get that as close to zero as I can. Now, I could just right click on this and go to audio gain and then I could add like 10 here. It's going to uh, make it louder, let's listen. So this is an audio test just so that you can hear what it sounds like. It's certainly not bad, but you also have to keep in mind that what I'm saying right here, I'm kind of speaking at the same level. So you can imagine if I was yelling and then I was whispering, the yelling would be really loud, the whispering would be really quiet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to undo that by hitting Control Z here. And in the past, what I would do is I would add a compressor onto this clip, uh, but I found a better way to do it. And let me go up to window here and then to audio track mixer. And then there's this little arrow right here, show hide effects. I'm gonna click that. And if you're familiar at all with working in Audition, these are the effects that are in Audition. And I think they're much better than the ones that are in Premiere. So I'm going to click on amplitude and compression, and I'm going to click on multi-band compressor. Now, if you double click on this, it will give you the settings here, just like you were in Audition. You can change the presets and you can go through and change all these things. I am not good enough to know what all of these things do. But let's listen to this, first of all, without, and then I'll turn it on and we'll listen to it with. So it's off right now. So this is an audio test, just so that you can hear what it sounds like. So this is an audio test just so that you can hear what it sounds like. So it may be difficult for you guys to hear this, but not only did it make it louder, but it also compressed it a little bit, meaning that the quiet parts are a little bit louder, the louder parts are a little bit quieter. It, it evens everything out, and I think it makes my voice sound a lot better. You'll notice that it was still hitting around negative six. So all I have to do is turn up the gain right here, and let's just say I'm gonna turn it up Right around three, three and a half. Let's see what this sounds like. So this is an audio test just so that you can hear what it sounds like. So at this point you can see at the loudest point it did hit zero. Now I can keep pushing this up and it will not clip. That's the nice thing about this. Um, but what it's going to do is also going to enhance all of the quiet sounds and it's going to start sounding bad. So this is an audio test just so that you can hear what it sounds like. So this- so You can also hear as soon as I go quiet, it really raises up the ambient sound in the room and makes this hiss sound. So you don't wanna to go too crazy with this. You just want to raise it up enough to where you're getting close to hitting zero. Now, if you had audio on different track levels here, you'd add them across here. So this is track one, this is track two, this is track three and so on. But you could also add multiple effects onto each track. So I could add a completely different compressor or I could add some sort of uh, a limiter here, I could add reverb like this. And the reason why I like doing this rather than copying it in onto each file is that I can affect everything all at once and then just by hitting this FX button, I can turn it off. So if your computer starts to slow down while you're editing, just click that off, it makes things a lot faster. So guys, that's it. Hopefully this has helped. I know it's taken me years to find a lav system that I'm actually happy with, and this is the best I've found so far. For more content just like this every single day, head over to fstoppers.com, and if you'd like to check out our full-length photography tutorials, head over to fstoppers.com slash store.